We're going to go over what's called the no money exercise. And this is a great uh, arm strengthening exercise for softball players. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put my elbows at my sides. They're going to stay pinned. I'm going to grab this band and uh, I'm going to have my elbow at 90 degrees. So this is a flat ribbon like band. Uh, you can use a piece of tubing. It's not quite as comfortable in your hands, but one of these is the best, but you can use whatever you have. Uh, and then I'm going to grab it, hopefully with no slack in the middle. I'm going to rotate out. Keep my elbows at 90 degrees and I'm going to slowly return over like a three or four count. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to come back one, two, three, four. So the band's going to stop when it basically touches my sternum and then I'm just going to return. I'm going to try to keep my elbows pinned. Common error is to kind of do this. You'll see a lot of athletes do this, but uh, this is a really great uh, rotator cuff exercise. It's, it's fantastic for posture for throwing, uh, throwing velocity, for shoulder stability issues or arm pain. So I highly recommend it. Favorite exercise is a great bang for the buck exercise for preventing uh, shoulder blade winging, which is a common problem, especially in female athletes. Uh, it's also gonna strengthen the rotator cuff muscles and the, the front and the delt, the medial delts. Uh, so it's a really, really good exercise for any softball player, any overhead athlete, baseball, softball, volleyball, the likes of them. So we're just gonna start here at the hips. And I'm gonna slide right out in front, and I'm gonna slide right back down. But this isn't just the same boring lift you've always seen. I'm gonna slowly inch my way all the way until I'm at my side. So we just call this the all angles overhead raises because rather than just do one direction for 12 reps, I'm just gonna keep moving all the way till I get to the side and then it's usually gonna take me six or eight of them, and then I'm gonna slowly, incrementally move back all the way to the front. So right now I've probably done about 13, 14, I'm not counting. You know, and each, uh, each rep is just slightly more forward or slightly more to the side, depending on which direction I'm going. Gives you a crazy burn in your shoulders. You wanna do this nice and slow. I did a little bit faster than I would like uh, an athlete if I was coaching them. So number one, we're gonna do a couple different exercises just from like folded over in half. So I'm just gonna hinge at my hips, keep a flat back, and I'm gonna do T's. So I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades together with my arms out next to my sides, and I'm gonna do somewhere between 12 and 20 of these. Then I'm gonna go to Y's. So I'm reaching just slightly out in front, and I'm gonna do 12 to 20 Y raises. Again, you can do these without any weight. You can just do them in the outfield. Then I'm gonna do L. So I'm gonna lift my elbows up, I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna rotate and drop. So this is starting to get the external rotators. And again, you can go slower is better, but going fast isn't the worst thing in the world. After that, we're gonna do scat punches. So I'm just gonna kind of have a split stance. I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades back. I'm gonna reach out and then I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades back. So those four, T's, Y's, L's, punches. Go forward, small, forward, medium, forward, large. I don't think these big clapper ones are super important, but large is like pretty big, like a two foot circle. Then go backwards, small, medium, and then large, and then lastly, Kind of like you're washing a car, forward, so small, medium, and then large. And this is gonna kind of end up being at more like a 45 degree angle than directly out in front, and that's okay. Cause that's a really effective warm up. Your shoulders will be burning, they'll have a lot of blood and warmth pumped into them. So you'll be ready to go and then start your throwing progression from a short distance and from a low intensity. And that's really all you need. So he was talking about a little bit of shoulder issues right here. So this is called a trap release. Here, if you wanna go, we're gonna try the most sensitive spot. Tell me where the most sensitive yeah, spot pretty, is. Yeah. That's it right yeah. there? Mm -hmm. All right, so I need you to keep the posture up right. right here. Now this is gonna hurt. So I need you to make sure that you're communicating with me on how you feel it from here. So we're gonna push straight down on it. The angle we're pushing down is not a 90 degree. It's a little bit more up front here. So I'm gonna hit the spot. All right, you feel mm -hmm. it? Oh yeah. All right, so I need you to shrug both your shoulders all the way up to here as high as you can. Now, initially you can see right here, you can't get your shoulder up, so even higher. There it is, there's, we're trying to get a max range of motion. Okay, five seconds, all right, now relax. Now pinch behind, pinch your straps behind you as hard as you can. Okay, relax. Now we're gonna let it rest for five seconds. You feel it release oh, yeah. a little bit yep. right there. Okay, hold that. 
Okay, now reach out in front of you as far as you can. Oh, as yeah. As far as you can. Felt that one in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> and relax. So we're going to do this series twice right here. Now, how's it feel right now? Does it feel? Well, I felt on after that second one, it kind of like released yeah, a little exactly. bit. Yeah, exactly. You felt it right there. Yeah. So, that's a, so what that happens is right connecting right in there, some nerves that connect right into the neck right there that run through the shoulder, down through the shoulder, into the elbow, and then into the wrist and the hand. So this is the start of the tension and your, your, excuse me, <clears throat> your nerves work like fishing line. So they don't have a lot of pliability to them, okay? So if there's any tension that is pulling, like swelling or a muscle's tight, that's keeping it from being its actual distance, then you're gonna feel pain. So a lot of guys feel pain in the elbow if there's three nerves that run through the elbow and that's actually the swelling, the inflammation that touches those, that's actually what you're feeling that registers the pain to the brain. But the way the kinetic chain works in the arm is the trap right here connects to the shoulder. So if this is tight, your shoulder pulls up a little bit, which reduces the length of that nerve, which actually feels it in the elbow. So if the elbow is feeling tight, which we're feeling a little bit tight right yeah, here. Yeah, I right felt here, that right there. Right there. Yeah. So let's do it again and see if we can get it to release even further, All okay? Right. So you can actually, I can feel a big difference. There was a ball that was right here. There's a big difference in that trap. So we're gonna hit it right there. Okay, is that the spot? Yeah. Okay, oh, so yeah. go ahead and go back to the shrug all the way up. See, now you actually even higher range of motion in your trap. And relax. Now pinch behind you. Good. Relax. And then all the way down. Yep, you feel it relaxing. Oh, yeah. Down. And then now reach out in front again. There you go again, right there. And relax. Uh, that's, I think she's. I think she's ready to go now. Yeah. No. It, wow. Yeah. It definitely feels a lot better, a lot looser, in there. And I, for real, when you let it, when you came from one position to letting it relax, that's when I really felt it. Yeah. Like, I could feel. I could feel the whole thing going right here. Yeah. So that's that's, that's a great quick tip for any ball player who's got a tight elbow, tight shoulder. That's something you can do on your own or have a partner help you with. Turn this big guy around right here. We're gonna work the middle. Every, all these pitchers, everybody gets a knot right next to that scap right here, right here. So everybody's got a baseball at home. The cross ball's a little bit softer, it feels better. We're gonna put this baseball right here, but John's gonna lay on the ground. We're gonna do some snow angels to really try to break up that knot. All right, here's your ball. And just slide that, slide that baseball right underneath, right underneath that scap right there. Now you can see he gets it right in there. He's gonna find his most sensitive spot, okay? All right, now John, start with your arms all the way down by your side. All right, completely relaxed. Let everything fall. You feel that pressure right there? Oh, yeah. All right. Now raise your arms all the way up, and you're going to try to get them to touch above your head as far as you can go. Just go as far as you can. You can see his left hand where the baseball isn't getting right there. See the face really showing the, the extension. Once you feel like you've gotten to a point where you can't handle, then I want you to snow angel back down to your hips from where you started. How's that feel? Uh, yeah, painful. <laughs> Again? All right. Yep. Yep. Again, you do them two or three, two, three or four times, but you're really going to feel it as it goes. You're going to feel like that arm, your throwing arm is going to be able to go even further forward as you grind that knot out through your scap. Should my hands be any certain way? As yeah. You want to keep palms up all the way down and then kind of let them go down. Like just feel natural from there. I'm trying to really focus on your thumbs going as far away from your shoulders as you can. I'm trying to get both hands to touch the ground as much as you can. This is a mobility workout to really try to break up the tightness, maybe some scar tissue that you got in there, release the fascia. Yeah, I noticed on that last one, I was able to touch the ground with my right one. The yeah, other exactly. two, I wasn't able yeah, to. Exactly, and this is only the third one. Wow, that's much looser now. That was only four, four times, right? Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, stand up, see how you feel. Yeah, much looser. I mean, I could tell after that third one when I could touch before and I couldn't touch. So that's a great one if, if you are throwing, in the middle of throwing, you feel an issue with your shoulder or something, just knock those two exercises out. Or if you can get into a daily routine doing it, the more pliable that we can make our muscles and our shoulders, the less chance of injury.